Alhamdulillah, he will be out of mean. Was some of all the Salam Allah and the Bian of Mohammed. While Ali was Ahbi, he was Salam, and the better habit of Allah. The question was asked about from a person who says that they feel difficulty with regards to their deen. And this is a natural uh, inclination and tendency that we all go through because we know Iman, Yuzid, Bi Ta'a, Wa Yankus, Bi Ma'asi. That Iman, faith, it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it decreases with uh, sinfulness. So the more that we do sin, the more that our Iman decreases. The more that we do obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more this will increase our Iman. And with that, even with saying that, as human beings, we're frail. So of course, we at times are weak in our Iman and have different stages of that and the shaitan may prey on you. The lone wolf is prey to the shaitan. The, uh, the lone sheep is prey to the shaitan. Or the lone sheep is prey to the wolf. So, meaning that when you're alone, that the shaitan will prey upon you even more. So, we need to know those things and which way uh, can we deal with uh, this difficulty during these difficult times in our Iman. And so I wanted to go over a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, which would give us insight into... Uh, uh, so listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. عن سفيان بن عبد الله الثقفي رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله كل في الإسلام قول لا أسأل عنه أحد بعدك وفي حديث أبي أسامة غيرك قال كل آمنت بالله ثم استقم in this hadith in Sahih Muslim and this is the hadith of سفيان بن عبد الله الثقفي رضي الله تعالى عنه he said, <clears throat> I asked, uh, I said, so he's reporting, he's narrating this hadith. He said, I said, uh, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give me something in Islam or a statement of is in Islam that if I ask that, uh, that I cannot ask anyone except you. And in the hadith of Abi Usama, which is another uh, hadith, he said, غيرك, which basically means the same, uh, other than you. That means that, that I can only ask you. The Prophet Wasallam said this very short hadith, which we should memorize. قُلْ آمِنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَمْ the Prophet wasallam said, Say, I believe in Allah and then be upright. So memorize that hadith, Ayyu uh, al-Muhabba. And the hadith in Arabic goes just as far as this al fad because it's so short. Qul, or just say this because this will help, this is for your iman. Amin tu billahi. That's it. I believe in Allah and walk straight. So, in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in very short and concise and precise words, uh, gave this Sahabi Jalil or this. Uh, gave the Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu a, the, the prescription for how they should deal with life in general. And this is a prescription on how to deal with weaky men. Because although it's concise, it's from the Jawami al kalam meaning those, those very, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, spoke uh, with uh, very precise words that were full of meaning, that were very simple, very short, but full of immense meaning and fawa'id. 
And this is one of those hadith which illustrates that. <coughs> so, uh, the Prophet والسلام, said, Say, billah, I believe in Allah, then walk straight. So, what does uh, billah mean? What does that entail? Because that's one of the pillars of Iman. Some of the ulama, they say, I wahid Allah Azza wa Jal wa amin lahu al-Iman al-Nadhi yukhrijaka min shirk wa kufran. Wa qala ibn Kathir, qul amin tu billahi ya'ni akhlas al-ibadata lillahi wa hiya bima'na qul al-awwal. So listen to this. This is what some of the ulama, they say about this statement, this short ibara, amin tu billahi, I believe in Allah. So some of the ulama, they say, it means to make Allah one. Not that you're making Allah, but this is a figure of uh, expression, meaning that you worship Allah alone. This is pure tawheed. Tawheed al uh, So amin, uh, amin luhu, Al Iman Al Ladi Yukrijika Minashuk Wil Kufran. That this is the, the Iman so that you express your uh, uh, um, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your belief in Allah by purely worshipping Him and freeing yourself from shirk and disbelief in totality. And Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that this statement, it means to make all of your ibadah, akhlas al-ibadah lillah, to make your, uh, make your worship strictly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the meaning is basically the same. That you have pure worship. Free yourself from shirk. This is the first thing. The other statement the Prophet ﷺ said, Then be straight. Or upright. So this statement means, To walk straight. Ay, al-ilzam ta'a. Ta'atu Rabbuk Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa shari'iyatihi That this means To adhere In strict obedience To your Lord Subhanahu wa ta'ala And his sharia And his commandments So the Islamic legislations That come from the book of Allah And the sunnah of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what also affirms this meaning, the meanings that we've already talked about, but what affirms this meaning from the Quran? What affirms this meaning from the Quran, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهَ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ أَلَا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ to Adun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al -Kareem, Verily those who say, Our Lord is Allah, then, istaqamu, then they walk straight, then they're upright. The malaika descend upon them, and they have no reason to fear, nor to be sad, and they received the glad tidings of paradise, which they were promised. So look at all those fawaid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the person who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and walks upright. And walk upright means clean to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is walking up upright. Because we know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, that this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised in paradise that if they worship and believe Allah alone and they walk straight, meaning walk upright, meaning follow the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the malaika will descend upon them 
and they will have no fear and they will not become sad. They won't be sad. They won't be sad. Why? Because it's Iman. So yes, our Iman fluctuates. But this is the way to get your Iman strong and back is that you, the more you make, uh, you adhere to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best of your ability, then this is going to strengthen you. It's like a cycle of khair. It's a cycle of goodness. So from the, the ulama take from this ayah that this walking straight a ta'jil bi ta'a bad al-iman wa adam al-ta'khir that the person that they rush to be uh, to, to be obedient to Allah to do the commands of Allah after they have iman and they do not uh, you know delay this this makes it a, a very important point of the importance when we want to have iman what do we need to believe in something you need what you need knowledge you need ilm. so this shows us the importance of gaining sound Islamic knowledge striving to put that in your daily life that you're reading some Quran every day and learning the meaning of those ayat and you're reading something from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu every day. This keeps your, your Iman and helps you stay focused and educates you and builds your Iman. Because the further you are away from the sunnah, the further you are you away from the Quran, your Iman's going to get weaker and you're going to be challenged in, a, in the, the type of lifestyle that we live in this, this day and age, the technology age or uh, after the information, post-information age. All of these shubahat, all of these doubts will come to you. They'll attack you. And the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn will attack you. So you need to believe in Allah. And you need your weapon to defend yourself against that, which is knowledge, which is ilm. And fiqh fi deen. May yurid Allah bi khayrin yifakul fi deen. The Prophet said, Whoever Allah wants, whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives them knowledge of the, uh, of the religion. He gives them fiqh fi deen. So you need the fiqh fi deen, and that is a part of your iman. That is going to strengthen your iman. That is how you know how to be obedient. How are you going to know to be obedient to Allah except by reading and understanding and having knowledge of His commands? How are you going to know to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And what is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And how to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the methodology of the sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? How? How are you going to know that? You have to know that through knowledge. It's going to come through knowledge, through ilm. Then, another verse which also illustrates this. So it shows you that the sunnah and the Quran... They, that is Islam. If you want to talk about delil and evidence for anything, it comes from what? The book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's where it comes from. Everything else uh, supplements. And how do we understand the book of Allah and how we understand the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes from the methodology, the madhab, the, the, the way of the Salaf of this Ummah, how they understood it, how the classical scholars, how they understood it. That's how we understand. That's what helps us in our practice. That's what helps us in the, the explanation, the interpretation of those divine texts. Listen to this ayat. This also affirms for us that same meaning of the Hadith of uh, believing in Allah or worshiping Allah alone, which is Tawheed, and being straight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَقَّلُونَ الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْحَقَّ uh, verse, uh, uh, verses 2 and 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, the believers, <laughs> that verily the believers are those that when Allah is mentioned, His name is mentioned, their hearts fill with fear, 
And if the ayats, if the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, are read to them, zadat hum imana, that their iman increases. Look, at that's the state we want to get into. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with that ameen. Zadat hum imana, so that when Allah's verses are read, when the Quran, when the kalam of Allah is read, their iman increases. And upon their Lord, they rely. It is to rely solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking the actions and preparations to do that. So when we make tawakkal on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does that mean? Say if you want to, you want your, your money increased, you want to, you want to get married, and you need money to get married as a man. To be able to take care of your wife. If you sit in the masjid and you just pray, chances are, unless Allah just opens the door up from that, that you're not going to get those means. Because as the ulama mentioned, a tawakkal i'timad al Allah wa fi'l asbab, that it is relying solely upon Allah after, uh, after taking actions. That means you took legitimate steps to get. Uh, to get a job and to get married. You took legitimate steps. You actually took action and then you put your fear, your trust is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the sifat, the characteristic of the mu'mineen. إِنَمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That their, their hearts become fear. And if the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ayat are read, it increases their iman. And upon their Lord, they rely. Because their iman's increased. And they rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us to be from them. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Alladheen yuqimuna salat. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives other uh, attributes of the mu'mineen. Very, those who pray. And from their wealth, they spend. Listen to this. Alladheen yuqimuna salat. Wa mimma razaqanahum. And from what we have provided for them, they spend. So that, that takes Iman. Look at all these people with wealth. So much wealth. Uh, millions. Billions of dollars. Billionaires. Allah knows best if they're making tawakkal on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they lose their wealth, when 50 Cent loses his house that's worth so many millions of dollars, Will Smith loses this, this one loses this, this one and this one, and all the, the ways people attach their hearts to this dunya. If they were only to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would increase them. And they would have to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in order to thank him. And they would have to worship him properly in order to thank him. Because the believer knows, <laughs> And from what we have provided, Allah provided that. Allah provided. When the believer has full iman that Allah is the one who gave them that risk to be able to spend, then they'll feel more comfortable. That really, I'm just a means. I'm a, I'm a wasila. I'm, I'm able to spend only because my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for me. Uh, Verily, they are the real believers, the real mu'min. May Allah bless us to be from them. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. I apologize for taking so long, but we're going to get into this hadith. So I hope that the answers for the original question are found within this, uh, this sitting. Here's another ayah which also affirms this meaning. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم in سورة التوبة he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the believer, the believing men and the believing women, that they are, uh, they are supporters of one another. They command the good and they forbid the evil. 
and they established the prayer, and they paid the zakat, and they are obedient to Allah and His Messenger. Verily, Allah will grant them mercy, and verily, Allah is a, a, a very Allah, Azizun Hakim. <clears throat> so that again, those are sifat of the mu'mineen, and again, they illustrate for us what about having istiqama that all of these things fall under what it means to be to walk straight and to be upright. It's to have those characteristics of the mu'mineen, of the mu'min, of the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let this be a source of your iman, boosting your iman. Yeah, you're going to get weak. Realize you're going to get weak, but then turn. When you get weak, that's when you even more so start pray rakatain to Allah. Because no one else can help you. The priest can't help you. The sheikh can't help you. Maybe they, they can give you a reminder. The sheikh can give you a reminder about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in this respect. Yes, he can make dua for you as well. But really, ultimately, it's all coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you turn to Allah. Come closer to Allah. Through obedience to Allah, this is going to help you when you become weak. Amantu billahi thumma staqam. Say, I believe in Allah. And then, be upright. Kitab wa sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al kareem also, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَمَا وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكْ وَلَا تَغْتَوْ وَلَا تَغْوْ وَلَا تَتْغَوْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al kareem Then be straight. As a you were ordered as you were commanded and make toba and and those who make and the one who makes toba with you uh and do not transgress and transgression transgression as the mufassirin they describe that transgression in the last part of the verse wala tatgho and do not transgress that this means to go beyond the bounds what does going beyond the bounds mean? Going, bound the, going beyond the bounds of Islam with extremism. So either to be extreme, and that could be extreme in, in all kind of... You could be extreme, you could make uh, tabdi of everyone. You could be extreme, you could make takfir of everyone, calling them disbelievers. You could be extreme in your practice and how you are with yourself by being extreme. Going beyond the bounds instead of being consistent with your ibadah. One day you're... You know, you're you're doing, you know, tahajid and this and this and this. And then for months, you leave it. And you're not even praying, maybe. Not even the five salawat al khams. So, not being extreme, nor being extreme in the sense that you, uh, that you uh, waste, that you waste the deen. That you don't actually practice the religion. But instead, you're ordered to be on istiqama, to be straight, to be upright. And there are many other ayat which illustrate this, but for the sake of time, we'll be a bit more concise. So Kathir, many of the people, and this comes back to the original question, that I feel far from my deen, that many of the people, they have uh, zeal, especially new Muslims. A lot of times we have a lot of zeal. We want to practice. We read something Bukhari, we read an ayah, and we want to practice it. You know, we believe we're doing the right thing. But we don't have the prerequisite knowledge to know how to practice it properly. And to know who that's for. And to know how to command the good and how to forbid the evil. We don't have those tools. Those are tools. And that requires knowledge. And it requires wisdom. And it requires fiqh, fiddin. So a lot of times we have this zeal, but then they will be um, shidda, they will be stern with the people, harsh with the people, and they'll only use violence and harsh speech. And with this, they will be prohibited from the tawfiq. The tawfiq meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not grant them the success. They were trying to practice something good, they wanted something good, but they didn't have success because of the ignorance uh, and the distortion of the religion held them back. Bid'ah, innovation, held them back. 
because they went on other than the path of the Sharia. And this is a statement of uh, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. He said, وَكَمْ مَنْ مَرِيدْ لِلْخَيْرِ لَمْ يَبْلَغُهُ How many people who want good, they never achieved it. Meaning it's not sufficient just that you want good. So many people want good. But they don't have tawfiq. They don't have the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on their side. So they want to do an act of ibadah. They want to do good. They want mankind to be guided. But they do it the wrong way. And we can think of millions of examples, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Some of the Salaf used to say, وَقَالَ السَّلَفِ مَنْ عَبِدَ اللَّهَ بِمَا لَمْ يَشْرَعْ كَانَ مَا يُفْسِدْ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ مَا يُصْلِحْ The Salaf used to say, some of them used to say, that whoever worships Allah in a way that is not legislated, meaning bid'ah, then they are those who cause more facade, more wickedness, then they rectify. Basically, they cause more harm than good. Even though they were worshiping Allah, they had sincerity, they wanted to worship Allah, they wanted good, but they did it with bid'ah. They went the wrong way. This is the, all the sects in Islam. How do they go astray? The Khawarij being the first. Look at uh, these contemporary groups like groups like Shabab, ISIS, uh, all these other ones. On the, they look like they're really holding on to the sunnah. Big beards and this, short thobes and whatever else. All the other outer trappings. Their women are all covered and they seem like they, they talk about the Quran and they talk about the sunnah and they'll mention these ayat. And maybe some of them want good. But their path is evil and destructive. So look at their end result is, is destruction. They cause destruction for humanity and they destroy themselves. So you want the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be, you want to worship Allah based upon the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So some of the Salaf used to say that whoever worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that they were commanded, then they are worshiping their Lord. They're doing it properly because they're following the book and the sunnah. <coughs> and whoever worships Allah the Almighty according to his preference, then he is a worshiper of his desires. He took his preference, his way. He, he was sure that what he was upon was correct and he ended up worshiping his desires instead of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is because Allah the Almighty did not command him to do those things or to worship like this. But verily, instead, his desires commanded him and his opinion and his viewpoint. Ahabat Tifillah, those are just some of the benefits with this hadith. Getting more specific to the question at hand, I feel for my deen. So what can we say after all of that to help us uh, improve our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we just feel weak. For one, is pacing yourself. Being consistent in your practice. Never ever give up your salat. Never ever give up your prayer. Pray five times daily. I don't care what comes up your way. Never abandon the prayer. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man taraka salat fakad kafara. Whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved. Do not even go near that. Open that door of evil. Always maintain your prayer, even if other sins consume you. Keep your salat. Another point is, is, uh, is educating yourself by seeking knowledge. Seeking some knowledge to benefit yourself. It's good for your heart. It's soul food. That iman, uh, you know, uh, seeking knowledge is soul food. It, it replenishes your soul. <laughs> These things will help you. Likewise, have good companions. And I've mentioned a lot of this stuff countless times, but make sure that you have good 
uh, companions with you. People who are going to encourage you to do good. And make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. So read the Quran as much as possible. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. And truly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't just say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, with no meaning. Don't say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wallahu Akbar, with no meaning. Understand what, what it means. And say that with your heart. And do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way the Prophet wasallam did it. And you'll find safety. And you'll find security in your heart. And this will help you. Because your iman is going to go down another time. But you need to have tools to help you defend yourself and help you bring yourself back. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with alma nafia, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amal al and strengthen our iman. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.